Welcome to webbikeworld.com. This is a brief video to illustrate part two of the webbikeworld.com article describing a tour of the Nolan Helmet Factory in Italy. There is some information and a lot of misinformation on the differences between worldwide motorcycle helmet safety standards, and this topic can be confusing to motorcycle riders. We discussed some of the differences during the visit to the testing labs at Nolan Helmets, and I learned some interesting facts which are illustrated here and described in the article on webbikeworld.com. First, we'll look at a demonstration of the DOT drop test. The drop test is part of both the DOT and ECE standard, but the DOT test is on a guided rail and the ECE test is unguided. In this test, the helmet is placed on the DOT head form, which is a head shape made from metal with a standard size and weight. As you will see later in this video, the DOT, Australian, and ECE standard head forms are much different. In this test you're watching, the helmet is being dropped onto the standardized flat anvil. There are other tests, including a drop test onto a hemispherical surface. The head form sensors record the impact energy, which is recorded and displayed on a computer, and I'll let the Nolan staff describe what we're seeing. That is what you see there, the results. I mean, this is the limit. The red line is the limit. 400, loro. Yeah. Yeah. Four hundred G. Sopra proprio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the green is. And the green is our performance. The performance. Yes. Okay. And the and this is the duration of and the that impact. That's the duration of the of the. Uh, of basso che non è dentro perché su viene calcolato solo sopra i 150 ah. e sopra i 200. Ah. Now the helmet is being dropped a second time as part of the DOT test, which is somewhat controversial. More on this issue also in the full webbikeworld.com article. So even after the DOT required test of two impacts on the same location, the maximum energy transmitted is 177 Gs for this Nolan helmet. You see is a free impact? This is what you call it as an ECE. That's an ECE. This is ECE 2205, you know? Yeah. It's not guided, you know, just right. fold it out and then falls down a free fall. There is guided by the monorail. Qua superato i 150 G. Here on the second impact, you know, we have the end, we are over the 150, you know, we are 177. But still below the. Yes. So no. 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 The, limit, the limit is 400. This 275, the red line, you see, oh, sorry is the one for ECE. U limit for DOT limit is 400. The maximum allowable is 275 G's for ECE and 400 G's for DOT. E il due time in questo caso 2,30 mm -hmm. superati 105 e limite 4 mm -hmm. milliseconds. So we have got, you know, because we are over the 150, you see here, you know, we are, we are 177, we have a, temp, a millisecond time of t 230, the limit is four, mm -hmm. so we are more or less a little bit higher than the half of the request. Right. But apparently the ECE drop test is from two meters with only one drop in a semi-random location and using a completely different head form, so it's difficult to compare the standards. Again, more on this in the full article. Here's a look at the hemispherical anvil, the flat anvil, and the DOT head form. And here's a look at the standard head forms as required by the different standards. On the right is the DOT head form, in the center is the Australian standard head form, and on the left is the ECE head form. You can see the differences. The ECE head form looks much closer to the shape of a human head, but notice also that it is longer and narrower, which may be one of the reasons why some ECE helmets have a different internal shape than DOT helmets. Now let's take a look at some internal quality control testing that Nolan performs that is unrelated to the standardized DOT or ECE helmet testing. This was a dramatic illustration of the importance of the EPS liner in a motorcycle helmet. First, a polycarbonate shell with no EPS liner was placed on the testing fixture. A weight of 330 grams will be fired at the helmet shell at 180 kilometers per hour. Fantastic! You can see the damage to the shell. This is because there is no EPS underneath to absorb the impact. 
Now watch what happens when the same test is done using a polycarbonate shell with the EPS liner installed. Now you can see there is almost no noticeable effect on the helmet shell itself, but I can assure you that the EPS inside was very much flattened after having absorbed the energy over a fairly wide area of about 8 centimeters. It's compressed by the heat. Mm. At the outside? The outside, no. Mm. On, on a polycarbonate damage. It will be a, a composite damage, yes. We will have a delamination. Yeah. We now put the same shell with the EPS liner back in one more time, and you can see that there is slightly more damage, so the EPS still helped absorb some of the energy after the second impact. We start to see some mark mm -hmm. here, but it can be even worse uh, on the story, because that's, you know, now we have no more energy absorption here, right. okay? One more time just for fun, on the same helmet shell with the EPS liner. You can now see that the shell is severely damaged because the EPS has been completely compressed and has no more energy absorption capabilities. The point here is that you can't tell by looking at a helmet shell whether or not the EPS has been compressed, so it's imperative to buy a new helmet if yours is bumped or if you experience an accident, minor or otherwise. Be sure to read part two of the Nolan Helmet Factory Tour on webbikeworld.com for more information. Thanks for watching.